Hello, welcome to part 4 of Golang series. Today in this session, we'll discuss what are variables and how to declare and define variables in Golang. Following that, we understand what is scope and lifetime of variables and then we move into discussion about the naming conventions and how variables get shadowed in Golang. Before we understand what are variables, let's have a look at the following example program. So right here in this example, we are using println to print a value onto the console. Even though if you execute this program multiple times, you will get the same value that is 510 as an output. Because here 510 is the fixed value and it can't be changed while the program is in execution. With fixed values, it is impossible to write a program that solves the problems with the real world scenarios. So right here, we need some mechanism that must be capable to store the values that we read from the user and the values must be changed if required while the program is in execution. So this is why we got the concept of variables. So what are variables? Variables are the data units which are capable to store a value and the values in these variables can be changed while the program is in execution. Like C, C Sharp and Java, Go is also a statically typed programming language. So in statically typed programming languages, variables must be declared before we use them. So why declaration? Declaration specifies the name and type of the variable that we are going to use in our program. There are three different ways to declare a variable in Golang. As a first way, you can use the way keyword and the name of the variable and the variable type. Here, we decide the type based on the value that we are going to store in this variable. After declaring a variable, you can define a value to the variable using the assignment operator. So this is how we declare and define variable in Golang. So this is one way. As another way, you can also use the way keyword and the name of the variable equals to operator and the value that you want to assign to the variable. This is a bit compact method when compared to this style. Apart from the first two methods, we have another compact method to declare the variables in Golang. Specify the name of the variable and colon equal to and the value that you want to assign to the variable. In my case, I would like to assign 30 to this variable. Remember, in both of these two ways, you must define a value to the variable at the time of declaration, else you'll get a compilation error. So now, among these three ways, which way I have to use? If you are declaring a variable, and if you want to assign the value to the variable later after some time, then you need to use the first way, else if you are assigning the value to the variable at the time of declaration, then you can use either of these two ways. This is how we declare and define a values to the variables in Golang. Now let me verify by printing all three values using printer n. Value, value2 and value3. Use go run command to compile and execute the program. See we got 10, 20 and 30 as an output. And next. Based on the name and the place where we declare the variable, we categorize the variables into three types. They are local variables, global variables and package level variables. If the variable is declared inside a function, then we call it as a local variable. And if the variable is declared outside of a function and the variable name starts with the uppercase letter, then we call it as a global variable. Similarly, if the variable is declared outside of the function and the variable name starts with the lowercase letter, then we call it as a package level variable. For example, in this program, we have declared three variables inside main function. So if the variables are declared inside a function, then we call these variables as local variables. Being a local variables, these variables cannot be accessed from the function in which we declared. So for example, these variables can be accessed from only inside main function and other functions cannot access these values. If you see here, we have declared another variable called gValue and the name of the variable starts with an uppercase letter. As we know, if the variable is declared outside of the function and the name of the variable starts with an uppercase letter, then we call this variable as a global variable. Remember, all the global variables can be accessed by all the functions in same or different packages. For example, here I have declared this variable inside package main. but this variable can also be accessed by the functions of other packages as well. And next, we declared another variable right here. If you see this variable, 
it was declared outside of the main function and the name of this variable starts with a lowercase letter. So if the variable is declared outside of the function and the name of the variable starts with a lowercase letter then we call this variable as package level variables. The package level variables only accessed from the functions of the same package. Remember at package level you are not allowed to use colon equal to syntax to declare a variable. If you do so you will get a compilation error. The most important thing that we need to remember in case of variables is that if we declare a local variable and if you want to use that then we will get a compilation error. Let me show an example. If you see here I have declared a local variable and I am not using this variable at anywhere. Let me compile and execute this program. See here at line 4 we got an error that is variable declared but not used. And next we have shadowing. If the variable is declared at package level and if the same variable is redeclared at local scope and if we try to access it locally then the package level variable will get shadowed by the local variable. Let's see an example. In this program I have declared two variables. One is at package level and other is at local scope. Now if I print this value you will get 10 as an output because here the package level variable gets shadowed by the local variable. Here the local variable has higher precedence when compared to the package level variable. So let me compile and execute this program. See we got 10 as an output. This is how shadowing works in Golang. And at last we have the naming conventions of variables. When we are giving a name to the variable, it is always recommended to use camel casing when compared to the normal one. For example, if you want to declare a variable that stores employee name, instead of choosing a variable name like this, it is always recommended to choose a variable name like this because the second one has a more readability when compared to the first one. Always use single letters for indexing variables. For example, in the looping construct such as for loops, it is always recommended to use the single letter variables when compared to the lengthy variables because these variables have a shorter lifetime when compared to the normal variables. When we are choosing a variable name, it is always recommended to choose a variable name as short as possible but make sure the variable name is descriptive. For example, if we want to store the employee name, instead of choosing the variable name as employee name, we can choose something like emp name. This name is short as well as descriptive. Always try to use uppercase letters to represent acronyms. For example, if you want to choose a variable name that stores URL, then it's always recommended to choose variable name like this. That's all about the naming conventions of variables. Let's see a quick summary on what we have discussed today. In today's session, we understood what are variables and what are the different ways to declare variables in Golang and what are the different levels of variables and their scope and lifetime. Also, we understood what is variable shadowing and Finally, we understood what are the naming conventions of variables. That's all in this video. If you have any suggestions or corrections to make, please leave them in the below commenting section. Hope you like this video and thanks for listening.